Let's get it, let's get it. You are now tuning into Wi-Fi Willie, the GOAT of Raiders YouTube. He will react to the latest NFL news and the latest around his favorite team. Text-to-speech is turned on for every super chat, so make sure to chime in during the stream. Damn, I love Wi-Fi Willie so much. Curse words at the top of the show. Shout out to everyone. I had to hide that so the algorithm does not punish me. Shout out to all of you hanging out right now. It has been so long. I cannot wait. This is Wi-Fi Willie. We're going to be breaking down so much NFL and Raiders news today. But it is April Fool's, so you need to watch out. Do not be fooled online, on social media during April Fool's. I will not be doing any lame-ass April Fool's jokes during this stream. Hell freaking no. Colin Kaepernick being signed by the Seattle Seahawks. No, it is not happening, obviously. We are going to watch out for that. And any other Raiders fake news out there, I have seen some. I'm not even going to show it because I don't want anybody to get confused. But there is so much coming up today. And we can talk about some more things. You guys decide how long this stream goes. Go Raiders. Cool face. Sh shout out to Matt Matt and shout out to our bot Clarissa reading out all the super chats. Everybody give a round of applause to Clarissa. Clarissa. I'm already forgetting her name. Sorry about that. But hey. I've been gone for some time. I've had a little bit of a break. I think it was a good time to have a break. I'll get into that in a little bit as to why and a little bit of the direction of this channel to at the end of the show. But we're going to talk about the draft. We're going to talk about the Raiders, their needs on this team, and some funny little updates and news that have happened throughout the week. If you are watching this not live, do not worry. We are going to truck through all these stories for the first half of this live stream and then hang out and have some fun during the second half. So shout out to all the people in the chat. Where are the members in the chat? We have all of just strangers. Even though we have hundreds of members, it's all strangers and friends who are just not quite members yet. But one day we will convince you to be a member. I guarantee it. Anyways... If I need to, I can turn it up. I can turn it up. We can get nice and crazy. And real quick, you know what? That is a good idea. Dial up Audrey in the chat. Good idea. Since I'm not going to do an April Fool's joke this year, a long time ago when I was just a wee little channel starting out, there, there, there was an April Fool's joke that I did uh, and I don't do as much stuff like this anymore, <laughs> but, um, let's check it out. It's been a long time. I don't think I've seen this maybe a couple years, uh, but let's check this out together. It's been a while. It's been a while. And, uh, this is the April fool's joke that I did 2022. I think it was around the same time that Josh McDaniels was hired. Yes. April 1st, 2022, April fool's joke. A lot of you guys got tricked. I'll just say that. 
Breaking, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. I was just in the shower, but I realized I had to go and film this video. Oh my god, Antonio Brown has signed with the Las Vegas Raiders. He had worked with Josh McDaniels in 2019. We know there's some chemistry there, and it looks like AB <laughs> is back in the house. After messing up with Hard Knocks, after calling Mike Mayock a mother effing cracker, AB <laughs> is back with the Raiders now. You know what? I'm stoked to see this. He's still a great competitor. I had to rush and hurry up and get out here. I had no time to waste, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, let me know in the comments if you like this signing. Are you down with AB, one of the greatest receivers of all time, despite the fact that he may have a little CTE, signing <laughs> with the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's freaking go Raider Nation! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Come on, bro. Did you really believe Antonio Brown would sign with the Raiders? April Fool's mother effer. Yes. F-A-B. 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 <laughs> go Raiders. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, and have a fun April Fool's. Pull a prank on somebody. We love this shit. And Wait, hope you enjoyed the video. my and concern. What, what is this straggler hair doing right hey, now? And have this, a funny. What, what, like, is this a little bit of. This reminds me of uh, Alfalfa. Uh, which movie was that with Alfalfa? What, what do you guys know? All, all the little, like the kids who are joking around playing pranks. Alfalfa, the, the single hair down the middle. What April the hell was this guy thinking at this point in time? But hey, it was all good fun. Classic, classic April Fool's joke. We don't do that anymore. Uh, that was when we were not a serious channel or as serious. We're still not that serious yet, but little rascals, little rascals. Yes, the chat, the chat has saved me and the chat now can see that I am wearing yellow shorts. Yes, yes, yes. Messed up from the shower, F-A-B, but that was a lot of fun. And uh, reflecting on an April Fool's, yes. But let's get right into business, everybody. Let's get right into business. Right now, we have a decent amount to get into. In terms of the Raiders and what's going on, haven't given an update on the Raiders. And let, let me just say, man, look, look real, real quick. And, and I know I, I have all these digressions all the time, but, you know, I'm going to get to it. You guys, you guys have seen the show before. You guys know I always get to it. I just, I could have made videos over the past few weeks. I just couldn't, I could not bring myself to just be like, oh, hey, the Raiders may be trading up. I, I, I was doing that for a while, reporting on all the ESPN reports. But it just it, it just keeps changing every day, and it's it's kind of the same song again and again. And I just didn't want to do it again. And this is a prime example. You know, we've been talking about what's happening with the Raiders. Are they trading up? Are they not? Could they? And this is just another one that happened, and this was March 28th. I, I could have made a video about this, but it's just... It just felt like the same song over and over again. Oh, the Raiders might be trading up, but at a certain point... When, when is it going to happen? Like, let me know when it happens, right? And this is another one. This is from Dan Graziano of ESPN, so not a nobody. I mean, this is this is legit. It's not like he's some random blogger, right? This is a guy who is an NFL insider, and he's saying that the Vikings and the Raiders are both desperate to move up to pick three. Now, the Vikings has two first-round picks, so and the Vikings don't really have a quarterback plan. They have Sam Darnold. The Raiders have Garner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. So from my perspective, like I think the Vikings are going to get it. They have two first round picks. They're more desperate than the Raiders to move up. Uh, it'd be easier for them to move up. And it just, it just felt like, okay, yeah, the Raiders want it to happen, but is it going to happen? Here's what the guy said. Those would be big jumps for both of those teams. And it could really depend on what happens at the very top. If we assume Caleb Williams goes first to the Bears, then what does Washington do? If Washington takes Jaden Daniels, that might make the Vikings or the Raiders less motivated to go up. If so so the, 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 the gist of it is that the Vikings and the Raiders are, see, are both waiting to see if Jaden Daniels falls. Now, like, are, are the Patriots stupid? Are the Commanders stupid? Like they're, they, they both have multi-million dollar organizations that literally invest so much into figuring out who's the best QB in the draft. Are they going to be just stupid and not pick the Heisman Trophy winner? May, I mean, maybe Lamar Jackson failed to pick 32 in 2018. I'm not saying it's completely impossible, but if Jaden Daniels is so great, which I believe he's great, then why would the commanders not pick him? They have Cliff Kingsbury, who worked with Caleb Williams, did, did decent on the offensive side of the football with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Obviously, Jaden Daniels would be a perfect fit there. So it, it just seems like everybody, including some of the biggest people 
in NFL media are just saying the same song over and over again. And, and, and look, this this is what I think is going to happen. And and look, if anything, I I have a being a Raiders fan and making Raiders content. I mean, I I'm a guy who would benefit from from playing up the fact that it's a possibility. I mean, I, I would benefit from this, but if I'm going to be completely honest, like I think the predictable thing is going to happen. I think the Bears at number one are going to take Caleb Williams, and I think the Commanders at number two are going to take Jaden Daniels. I think that that's just what's going to happen, and probably the Patriots take J.J. McCarthy. That's what I see happening. Now, who knows? There could be a shocker, but... It just seems like we're wishing for something. And then we have some more stuff we're going to show you in just a little bit that might put the nail in the coffin. And, and I hate to say that. Um, obviously, I want the Raiders to grab Jaden Daniels. I want them to have a franchise quarterback who's dual threat. And I think this guy's faster than Lamar Jackson. I was watching some of his games with Audrey. The guy is faster than Lamar Jackson. He needs to avoid the hits, though. That's what he needs to focus on. One Daniels, all of a sudden, that Patriots pick at number three becomes very valuable. Remember, the Vikings have already acquired a second first-round pick in a trade a couple weeks ago with Houston. Yeah, so, so the Vikings got two first-round picks, man. Um, obviously, Antonio Pierce, he's got the connection with Jaden Daniels. That would be great. That would literally be the, the Hallmark movie. Like, like, if you can write a movie, you know, the story of the Raiders with Antonio Pierce, underdog head coaching candidate, rallies the locker room, becomes a full-time head coach. Mark Davis takes a chance on him. Not only does he bring Jack Jones, who got released from the Patriots, who was a part of the Arizona State Sun Devils, but then, wow, he's able to get the GM, Tom Telesco, to trade up and grab Jaden Daniels, who he recruited to the Arizona State Sun Devils, and then you got a defensive star in Jack Jones from Arizona State, and then you got an offensive, offensive star in Jaden Daniels from Arizona State. Obviously, that'd be the biggest freaking miracle. That would be uh, you know a Hollywood script that would be beautiful there'd be confetti all over Las Vegas I might do a whole live stream shirtless even though I don't think anybody wants to see that but that's how excited we'd all be if that happened and I just unfortunately maybe maybe I'm just a cold-hearted Raiders fan where I'm like too good to be true ain't happening you know what we all think is gonna happen is gonna happen so that's that for that right now and here is the here's one funny thing that happened. So Jaden Daniels had his pro day on March 27th, met with the Patriots, met with the Commanders, the Giants, the Vikings, the Broncos, and the Raiders, right? Met with all these teams. And what no LSU or SC players, please. Draft DBs or does. Shout out to Matt. Matt, he wants no LSU players or South Carolina players. So I think he may be referring to... Um, the uh, I, I don't want I don't know if it's politically correct, but Spencer Rattler, you know, he's got very light skin. I think it's albino. I mean, I'm not sure. But anyways, interesting guy. I, I, I rooted for the guy last year watching a couple of games with him. But LSU players, I'm signing up for Jaden Daniels. L let me get this guy for sure. But what was really funny is the Raiders met with him and then this picture was posted and all anybody could talk about from this picture was this this dude's freaking elbow? What I mean, a lot of people thought, hey, is this Photoshop? What is going on with this? This is quite odd. Uh, and this is actually real. It's not Photoshopped. And you had a popular NFL Twitter doctor, Jesse Morris, uh, saying that he's dealing with a operation bursitis of his right throwing elbow, and it's a inflammation in the bursa, and it's a sack, and. Basically, he confirmed that this is a real thing. And what was so funny is this got so popular, as you can see, a half a million views on Twitter, uh, 15 million on Twitter for Ian Rappaport. Obviously, Rappaport always gets tons of views, but that's pretty uh, that's pretty intense. And it got so intense that Jaden Daniels had to respond to this on his elbow. He he had to he had to post on Twitter, and that is the problem with Twitter. Is you got. The random fans, random people, random trolls able to interact with high-paid, multi-million dollar athletes. It really is a special thing and an interesting thing happening with the NFL right now. My elbow is perfectly fine. Stop the cap. So it just the messages came pouring in at Jaden Daniels, and he had to tell everybody, hey, stop the cap. It's all fine. My elbow is doing fine, man. Come on, come on. So, I, I mean, I found that pretty funny personally. Uh, seeing that happen. Another thing that I found pretty funny, and this was just the other day, and it's 
Antonio Pierce, the head coach, everybody, the head coach of the Raiders, Antonio Pierce. Well, he was at a gala for the Silver and Black Gala singing on stage. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure this woman is this woman's name, and she was singing the majority of the night at the gala. And Pierce doing his own remix of My Girl is what is going on. Here. You know, it's, you know, what can make you feel this way, Raiders? It, 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 that's kind of what he was doing there. Um, and, and I found it funny. Like, you know, the guy's getting like, could you picture Josh McDaniels being this loose, you know, able to hang out at the gala, able to get on stage? I would have paid. You know what? I, I, I would pay. I would have invested and paid a crap load of money for Josh McDaniels singing up here at this gal. I would pay money to see him do that right now. I mean, I might sell some of this equipment that I have here to, to make that happen. I would definitely, definitely love to see that happen. But you got Antonio Pierce singing it up. <laughs> and I, I look, I liked it on one level. So there's sort of the and, and I think this is the debate that is happening with Antonio Pierce because compared to McDaniels compared to some of these other head coaches even around the NFL even compared to Raheem Morris right now some of the new hires David Canales new hire too with the Carolina Panthers Raheem Morris hired by the Atlanta Falcons among all these new hires in my opinion and, and maybe I'm wrong you guys let me know I feel like Antonio Pierce has been doing way more media, way more media than a lot of these guys. He's had a special on CBS. He has done the pivot podcast J just right off the top of my head is what I'm naming right now. And look, I, I'm, I'm someone who thinks that the NFL, I don't think it's entirely rigged, but I do think they do tip the scale to people they like. So when I see the NFL liking Antonio Pierce, all the way from Denmark, Denmark, Give it up to Peter Christensen all the way from Denmark. Shout out to Denmark. We got the Scandinavian and Nordic countries tuning in right now on Wi-Fi. Willie talking about Raider Nation. Yes, love this, love this, love this. Appreciate you, my guy. Um, but I like the fact when the NFL is interested in somebody with the Raiders, when they're doing media coverage of them, will they tip the scale to help them if they're in a pinch? And let, let's let's not be f like fake. That that happens in the league. When they like somebody, it's like, eh, I could see them throwing like, which is which one extra flag. I mean, I mean, they can't help all the way, right? But I do think that happens. So good to see. Now, in terms of Pierce doing so much media, there's been a lot of people, including Michael Lombardi. We know he is the dad of the former offensive coordinator of the Raiders, Mick Lombardi. We did a video about him, him talking trash uh, on Antonio Pierce. It was a pretty big deal, to be honest. Um, saying that he needs to shut up. And I feel like, you know, most people came after Michael Lombardi for that. But then when you have instances of this at the gala, you have other people kind of echoing the same sentiment. And these other people seem like Raiders fans. You know, I love this guy. I want to hear more from him. Um, you know, he's, he's a good leader. You got positive stuff like that. But you had one guy... Oh, this this guy. True. This this guy was saying no more of this. No swag. The foot tap dancing, and I've seen some of this. This was cheesy, but I was smiling. But there's been some some people saying, "Hey, is he doing too much media? Is he focusing too much on the media? Is he hyping up the Raiders too much? Does he need to keep quiet right now? Be a little more uh, undercover before the season starts?" There's that criticism, and I think you had Michael Lombardi, which is not a guy that I like, right? But it's, it's a guy who was echoing that similar sentiment, just, just to say the least, when he had that quick comment about how he needs to be quiet. I mean, the intro just says enough if you guys haven't seen it. Something. He thinks he knows the Raider way. It's a joke. Born and raised in LA? Born and raised in LA. Yeah. 
born and raised in LA, Tom from California. Like seriously, why would you stir up the Chiefs? Like they're yeah. laughing. They're laughing at him. Well, We're not in high school. Exactly. He's what? insulting our intelligence with this stuff. Why won't somebody in the Raiders tell him to shut up? Like you're not PT Barnum. Stop promoting. Like get back to work. Because he was the head coach in that game. Can't blame that on Josh McDaniels. Like if I'm Telesco, I'm saying, hey, Antonio, shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, the so right. Like, I mean, like the guy really did come after him. And I do like the fact that instead of, uh, you know, instead of being shook by that, you know, Pierce is sort of going with the route of saying, hey, you know, um, whatever, right? I'm still going to do my thing. I'm still going to sing at these these galas. I'm still going to have a good time. Uh, we're we're going to have some fun. And I'm going to still be in the limelight in spite of that. But I think this is good. I think this is good to see. I think it's positive. But I do think if the Raiders do not get a franchise quarterback, even though I personally like Garnu Minshew, I made my Garnu Minshew video the day he was signed. Check it out if you have not yet. I think it has like 90,000 views. It did really well because we put a lot of love into it because I was like, you know what? I was researching the guy. I like him. I like the guy. Do I think he's the best quarterback in the AFC West? No. Do I want him to be? Yes. But it's going to be really tough to compete in year one and have optimism with this fan base when you no longer have your franchise running back in Josh Jacobs. And unlike a lot of Raiders fans, I still respect Josh Jacobs and think he's a top five running. I think he's the best in the NFL, honestly. And when you don't, you don't have a franchise quarterback anymore because Jimmy G wasn't it. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but we're finding out Aiden O'Connell is not it. He's not it. I mean, let's, let's just be real. Maybe in the future down the road, who knows? But not it right now for damn sure. And Garnu Minshew, even though I like the guy, I like his spunk. I like his attitude. I think he's underrated. He's a guy who goes from team to team for a reason. And just like I mentioned earlier, these these other 32 teams, these other 32 head coach, 31, excluding the Raiders since, you know, excluding them these other 32 teams gms the other 31 head coaches other 31 gms they're not stupid they're not stupid and if they're not picking up Garnu Minshew, if he's traveling from team to team unfortunately there must be a reason for it you know what i mean so i think people are going to look back on moments like this if things don't work out and say hey you know you know a, a little too much media a little too much media but fortunately for pierce i think he has more time than a lot of people believe and i'm going to tell you guys why in just a bit as we get into some more draft news but taking a look overall at the raiders roster so free agency just passed the raiders did not make too many moves in free agency the biggest move was christian wilkins right and i don't understand these pff grades i mean the guy had his career high in sacks last year as a d tackle amazing stuff and he's ranked the 29th interior edge defender. I, I don't understand that at all. Um, but great year for Christian Wilkins. Still a young guy at 28 for a defensive tackle. Solidified the D-line. Malcolm Kuntz is getting better. Big issue for the Raiders. Defensively, I think we're going to need another linebacker. In case somebody goes down, Diablo, Spillane, you need a linebacker. And maybe even improve over Diablo. You know, he's had injury issues and we really haven't seen him spark to be as talented as somebody like Robert Spillane yet. So maybe try to upgrade at linebacker. Maybe try to bring some competition in at safety for Marcus Epps. That's a possibility. But the biggest need on the defensive side of the football for the Raiders entering the draft, and I'm going to do a little mock draft later for the Raiders towards the end of the stream. I'm sure you guys can see this at the... Um, very bottom this ticker here but it's cornerback the Raiders need a corner I was surprised they did not get anybody in free agency I thought they were definitely going to sign somebody maybe make a trade but they didn't for now you got Jack Jones as your starter maybe even your number one cornerback with how well he did towards the end of the year that pick six on Patrick Mahomes we will never forget it we will never forget it beautiful Christmas morning I I, I literally thought that Christmas morning game, I was going to have the shittiest Christmas, watch the Raiders get their ass whipped by the Chiefs, just like it always happens, right? And it was really, it was just a beautiful Christmas, man. We had, we had a ton of eggnog. We, we did the live stream. It was great. And obviously, Nate Hobbs. Now, if I'm the Raiders, if I was Pierce, I'm going to try to move Hobbs back into the slot. That's what I'd be doing. He still played a majority of his snaps in the slot last year. 
in 2022 with Josh McDaniels, I remember they tried to move him outside wide a lot instead of being in the slot. And I, and I thought that was so weird. The dude excelled so well in the slot in 2021. Might as well let the, let the guy do it again, right? So really need an outside corner. Jacorian Bennett, young guy, speedy, but we haven't seen anything yet. And he did not really start. Amik Robertson started over him. Amik Robertson is now on the Lions. So defense, it's corner. That's the number one need. It's pretty freaking obvious. We all know it. We see it coming. On the offensive side of the football, who, I mean, like, you know, if I'm going to be real, man, like, there's some freaking holes here. There is some freaking holes here on this offense. Like, I was really hoping the Raiders would get a pretty nice running back outside of Alex Madison, who, who's what they have. I'm hoping Zamir White becomes the number one running back. I think he was good in flashes towards the end of last year. And really, as long as you have a good, you know, as long as you have a good O-line, and as long as you got a running back who could read the blocks, you know, ha have great has great vision, you're going to be fine. You don't need the biggest athlete in the world. It obviously helps. Josh Jacobs proved it helps even with a makeshift O-line, which the O-line with the Raiders, quite frankly, horrible run blocking last year, in my opinion. Decent pass blocking. That is why I was a little more critical of Aiden O'Connell towards the second half of the season because I thought the Raiders' offensive line with Jermaine Illuminor, Mumford stepping up, especially when Colton Miller went down, I thought the O-line was doing well I, I, in terms of pass blocking. Run blocking, not so much. You got Andre James, who did well last year, solidified as your center. And you got Parham, who I think is going to be the guard for the next few years. And I think the Raiders maybe could have moved him to center possibly, but who knows? You got Fluker in at guard. Haven't seen much from the guy yet. We don't really know how that's going to go. He's quite up there in age too as well. So pretty much you need a whole right side of the O-line. Unless you're hoping that Thayer Mumford, the seventh round pick from Ohio State, is going to be your starting right tackle, which, hey, maybe if he's a sleeper and it could that could possibly be true, considering the fact that the Raiders did not sign pretty much any offensive lineman in free agency. I was absolutely shocked they did not do that. But the Raiders need a guard. They need a guard for sure, and they definitely need a right tackle. I mean, even if Thayer Mumford is your starter because he's a sleeper and behind the scenes you know he's, do he's dope, you, you, you got you to gotta get a right tackle. And wide receiver. I mean, I like Trey Tucker in spurts. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think you could still upgrade for your number three wide receiver, maybe even upgrade a tight end. Michael Mayer is also good in spurts, but if you can get some some competition in there for those two positions, that would definitely make your team better. And the biggest need is quarterback. I mean, I'm sorry. Can, can we say it? Are we allowed to say it? I want to root for, root for Gardner Minshew. I want to root for Aiden O'Connell. Shit, running back. I want to root for Madison, Zeus, and Amir Abdullah. But when I'm looking at this offense... Three biggest holes on this offense is quarterback numero uno, running back numero dos, and then right guard, right tackle numero tres, probably right tackle a little more than guard because the Raiders actually just re-signed a guard today, and I don't know if this guy's going to start. I know the guy's been on the team for a little bit, but the Raiders did sign Mr. Jordan Meredith today on April Fool's Day. Isn't that the best day? Isn't that the best day to be re-signed April freaking Fool's Day? It's like, hey, is this a trick? Am I really going to be on the team? Let me know. <laughs> let me know. Let me know. But, hey, I think right tackle becomes more of a need. I'm hoping Thayer Mumford is the future. But to me, it's it's QB and running back. Son of, son of a gun. I mean, it, it's the number one thing that you have to you have to figure out going into the draft. And we're going to do a mock draft in just a little bit. Shout out to everybody watching right now. I want you to tell me, where are you from in the chat below? I want to know where you are from. I am in the Pac Northwest, where it is sunny as hell, quite frankly. Look at all this freaking light. Ooh, let there be light. Let there be light, right? But we're going to darken it up for this live stream. Pac Northwest, hanging out. And I want to know where you guys are at, too. We got way more news to go through. And look at, in terms of the Raiders, Calvin Barron, what's up? Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you, my guy. Compton, we got Compton in the house. All right, great, great, great to see. So, 
Another thing that I believe, if there is any draft news, because we talked about the Dan, uh, we talked about the the visits with Jaden Daniels. Uh, we talked about the Dan Granziano, how the Raiders want to trade up. Here's something, and look, I don't think this is done yet. So I made a video and I talked about the fact that maybe Devontae Adams could be on the move this year, right? Uh, it was on my video when we talked about the new Netflix show that's going to be following the wide receivers based on what they did last season. You know, they had the Netflix quarterback show, now they have Netflix wide receiver. And, you know, this story came out and it caught my eye because I just I just really know by looking at all the news that's happened over the past year and a half surrounding Devontae Adams, you know, he could say whatever he wants. He's a professional. He's an upstanding guy. Um, and he's the, he's the best at his craft. You know, he, he's the best in the world. Uh, but the Raiders, I mean, when we're looking at the holes on their team, like, are they Super Bowl ready? I mean, no. I mean, they're not Super Bowl ready, right? Um, and it might even be tough to make the playoffs this year, which is why it, I, I think it kind of is rough for Antonio Pierce. Like, he, I don't think he has much to work with. He has a really good D line, good linebackers, a couple good corners, but, you know, some good receivers, but not much outside of that, honestly. So I feel like it's a little unfair to him. You know, I, I think I think maybe Mark Davis is going to give him, you know, a little more time. Perhaps next year he'll make a decision on is this guy the future. We'll, we'll figure that out. But I saw this story and it stuck out to me. The New York Jets, the New York Jets are interested in trading the number ten pick in the 2024 NFL Draft to a QB needy team. Who's a QB needy team? I, I mean, I wonder. Do, do we know a QB needy team? You guys know one. Right there, I think it's I think it's right over there, right? Right here, QB needy team. Right? So I saw this, and this is Rich. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Semini, the guy has been covering New York football for a while, though. I, I was reading some reports by that guy from over 15 years ago, just earlier today on some other video I'm making. But um I just still feel like this is possible because you know, so so in that video where I talked about the Netflix show Wide Receiver with Devontae Adams, I brought up the possibility of, hey, could the Jets still make a play for him? Last year, they openly talked about it to ESPN that they want to pursue Devontae Adams, you know, at, at all costs. They're going to go all the way for the guy. Appreciate you, Lalo Valdez. Appreciate you. Valdez. Sorry about that. Valdez. Appreciate you. Um, And so, look. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers wants the guy. It's his last hurrah. Devontae Adams makes it easier. But, th but then the Jets went and signed Mike Williams. And a lot of people said, oh, you know, the Jets signed Mike Williams. That means the Devontae Adams trade rumors to the Raiders are done. They're done. Well, you take a look at Mike Williams' contract. You understand the fact that just four months ago, maybe even less than four months ago, he had ACL surgery. And he's not expected to be back for training camp, expected to be on the pup list at the start of training camp, and might not even play the first few games of the regular season. So essentially, the Jets don't really have a number two wide receiver ready for week one. They still don't. And if you're Aaron Rodgers, you're the Jets, you got Garrett Wilson, you got Mike Williams, the former Chargers wide receiver. Yeah, he's banged up, but you got him probably healthy by the middle of the season. And if you add Devontae Adams in that mix, you have probably one of the more dominant wide receiver cores in the in the entire NFL. And so they're trying to trade the number 10 pick to a QB needy team. What would they trade it for? More draft capital in the future? If you're the Jets, you're not really looking to the future. You're trying to go all in right now while you have freaking the 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers, right? So I think they would trade for a player. And there's, there's no other player that this team wants on their team right now than Devontae Adams. There's nobody else. There's nobody else that they want on their team right now because Aaron Rodgers, you could say all the shit you want. He's pretty much the the GM of the Jets. I mean, there's there's been reports by The Athletic where they're calling Joe Douglas, this gentleman right here, this, you know, plum gentleman, but he's got the he's got the nice little shaved lining on the beard. He's got you he got some good beard beard treatment there. Mr. Joe Douglas is being called the assistant GM as a joke by writers of The Athletic. 
So Rodgers wants Adams, and the Jets want to trade away their number 10 pick. And Mike Williams, yes, the Jets paid him, but he's not expected to be healthy by the middle of the season. The Raiders, if you're competing with the Vikings, like we just talked about earlier, we talked about the fact that the Raiders are basically competing with the Vikings in case Jaden Daniels falls to pick number three. And the problem is the Vikings have two first-round picks, while the Raiders do not. Well, if the Jets are trying to give up this pick, I mean, I think that creates an opening. I think that creates an opening where then the Raiders could have two first-round picks just like the Vikings. If you're willing to trade away Devontae Adams for your future franchise quarterback, which unfortunately you have to make these decisions when you're trying to trade up in the NFL draft. I mean, like, literally, are, are we going to win a Super Bowl this year with Garner Minshew? You know, like, I hope so, but you know, people got to think smart about this, right? And so you got the Vikings who are trying to trade up like the Raiders just as hard as the Raiders. You get the Vikings sitting here with pick 23. And then they also have pick 11. Now the Raiders have pick 13. If they traded away and grabbed the Jets pick, if they were able to convince the Jets, hey, swap that first round pick for Devontae, then you got pick 13 and pick 10. That is better ammo than what the Vikings have to move up and snag the number three pick from the Patriots. Maybe snag it from the Cardinals if your quarterback falls there like Jaden Daniels. Or see if the commanders are down. I think they want to take Jaden Daniels. But you've also heard reports they like J.J. McCarthy. It's bullshit season. We don't know who anybody likes, right? That's how it is before the draft. Bullshit season, right? But I think this creates an opening. You're, you're, you're going to have more capital than the Jets if you trade away and grab their number 10 overall pick, would you do it? Let me know in the chat below and in the comments below. I know you want to pair Devontae Adams with whoever the new QB is. Maybe even Garner Minshew, you know, pair him with him. But if the Jets are, they're taking calls. Ring, ring, ring. They're taking calls. They want to trade away the number 10 pick. Do you do it? Do you do it? You got your, and, and you know what? It's funny, like, uh, I, I've been seeing interviews, um, and I don't have them off the top of my head, but I know on The Rush, the Max Crosby podcast, there was a lot of praise for Jacoby Myers. And there was another interview, I think it may have been the owner's meeting press conference by Pierce, and he was he was talking about examples of great players on the team. And, uh, ooh, Cat sat on the keyboard. Okay. Um Basically, basically mentioning Jacoby Myers before he mentions Devontae Adams as, as like a great QB or a great wide receiver, a great high effort person who's on the team right now. So there's a lot of praise for Jacoby and maybe it's because they envision him as the number one right wide receiver and the guy's good. The, the, the guy's very talented. So, so that's a good question. So Lalo's question in the chat, we did not. You know, he, he, I think he, the cat sat on the keyboard. So the question is, how do I feel about Michael Penix Jr.? Now, that, that's a good segue because I was going to talk about the guy anyways. Uh, a lot of people are checking out Mr. Michael Penix Jr. He had a good combine, a good pro day. Um, and, and by the way, if it, let me just tell you, before, before I end that last segment, Tom Telesco, I'll tell you what I think right now. If Tom Telesco knows that he can get the number 10 overall pick for Devontae Adams, he'll do that shit in a heartbeat. I mean, that's what I believe. And it's, I don't know his exact contract, but in terms of Tom Telesco, the GM of the Raiders contract, but I don't know how you pass that up. A 31 year old wide receiver, you're not really pursuing a Super Bowl right now. You can trade for your franchise QB that you'll have for five years and you'll have more draft capital than the Vikings. I mean, he would be lucky for them to be down to do that. Really? I mean, that's, that's the honest truth. So in terms of Michael Penix junior, Oh fuck. No, I didn't cuss. I didn't cuss. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. <laughs> I mean, look, this guy could realistically be there at pick 13 Earlier on, people were saying, oh, the guy's going to fall to the second round. I didn't really understand that. People talked about his injury issues. 
he had his injury issues years ago. He did tear an ACL in each knee, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been the same one, but it might be in each one. But since then, he's played two seasons in Washington, the Pacific Northwest Washington, the Huskies. And Michael Penix Jr. did really well at his combine and pro day. Now, at the same time, you got to take all that with a grain of uh, you know, salt, gym shorts, throwing with no coverage. I mean, that's kind of easy to do. It's not too crazy. Look, maybe I'd have a good combine. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? No, I don't think so. But he did have a visit, a top 30 visit. And you only get 30 of these visits. So people take these visits very seriously. Broncos, Falcons, Raiders, and Commanders. The Raiders met with this guy. He can realistically be there at pick 13. And if the Raiders want to stand pat and not trade up, if they really believe this guy could not only stay healthy, I mean, he did it the past two consecutive years, and if they think that he's a fit. Now, now one reason why you know, I don't think he's much of a fit, I think the, the Chicago Bears... What they did with Justin Fields, Luke Getze was there as the offensive coordinator. I think the offensive coordinator of the Raiders wants a quarterback who could run the ball regularly and not just spontaneous running the football when the play breaks down. Occasionally you scramble for five yards. No, I think they want somebody who could do design run plays. I mean, that that's what I believe they want to happen. And I think you can see it. And some of the other players they've signed to be death pieces like Anthony Brown. I keep bringing up Anthony Brown. Pierce was finally asked about him at a, at a press conference recently. But you could always tell the style of QB people want based on who's lower on their depth chart. And you got Anthony Brown on the Raiders right now. Former Ravens quarterback depth piece was an Oregon Duck as well. And he's there. He's there. He's on the team. He's a mobile guy, can do the design runs, and maybe that's what the Raiders are trying to get into. Maybe maybe that's the territory where they want to go. And when you're looking at somebody like a Michael Penix Jr., like I said, I believe he can scramble uh, at times, and he, you know, especially in that game against the Oregon Ducks, uh, against Bo Nix, he was able to do that a little bit. But when you're taking a look at the dude's numbers and if, you, if you've watched him over the past few years, he's not really the guy to, to run the football. He really is a, a, tra a traditional pocket passer. And I, I'm going to go ahead and say this because not a lot of people want to say this. And I don't mean nothing disrespectful by saying this. But a lot of sports fans just assume if somebody's black, they're mobile. Or if somebody's white, they're not mobile. And I always find that kind of funny. Like Byron Lefwich, great Jaguars quarterback. Was he mobile? No, right? He was not mobile. And Michael Penix Jr., a lot of people just consider the guy mobile when historically he really hasn't done much running the football. Let's take a look at some of his numbers. Michael Penix Jr., just over the past few seasons. Now, when it comes to rushing the football, last year in 2023... Three rushing touchdowns, four fumbles, and only 80 yards. Like, like Garner Minshew is, is, is running the football more than Michael Penix Jr. here. He's really not running it a lot. Not at all. Not at all. Will he scramble occasionally and pick up a first down? Yes, we've seen him do that throughout his career. But especially when you got those injuries on your legs, you're not going to be running the football. And then his other season where he was healthy in 2022 only 113 rushing yards with four touchdowns. Now, just to just to give you, I guess, an example. So 113 yards, 2022, 80 yards only in 2023. I mean, let, let's take a look at somebody like Bo Nix. And, and I'm looking at this for the first time in a while. 519 yards in 2022. Literally 500% more rushing yards than somebody like Michael Penix Jr. 2023, just this past year, Bo Nix, 256. You know, a little bit less, a little bit less. But still, 200% more, roughly, maybe more like 180% more than Michael Penix Jr. in rushing yards. And you got six touchdowns there. So when we're talking about Michael Penix Jr., when you're talking about if the Raiders want this guy, I think the question is, do you do you do you want a pocket passer? Do, do you want to have a guy who's just gonna 
be a drop back, three-step drop, maybe try to extend it a little bit. Somebody like Gardner Minshew, because he's not always doing design runs, but has before with the Jags mainly, it, you know, is that the guy you want? And I think when you're looking at these other teams who are pursuing him, Commanders, I don't think they're down. I think they're just taking a look at the guy. Broncos and Falcons, I see him as a better fit there. I can see Penix being a Sean Payton style QB, and I can see him being a Falcon style of QB because the Falcons have Zach Robinson as their offensive coordinator, who was previously working with the Rams. So he runs that Sean McVay, Gruden, West Coast style offense where you, you know, you have more of a traditional pocket passer. So I think that's the question you gotta ask yourself. I mean, the guy could the he is the best deep ball thrower in the entire draft class. There's there's no doubt about that. I mean, you know, that, that's a consensus. No, nobody's debating that. And, you know, he has shown to be pretty accurate and be a really good leader, actually, on the football field. Doesn't seem like he's shook by pressure besides against Michigan. But, you know, Michigan was just destroying Washington insanely during the college national championship. But, yeah, I, I think that's what you have to ask yourself. I think the Raiders are taking a look. In my opinion, I don't think they're going to go here. I don't think they're going to go in, in this direction. Per I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing just like anybody else. I think they're looking for somebody who has more legs. Uh, I would even suggest that they would probably pursue somebody like Bo Nix instead of Michael Penix Jr. But when you're in this stage right now leading up to the draft, you want to make teams like the Falcons, like the Broncos, you want to make everybody not know who you're going to pick. You want them to all believe, hey, I'm interested in this guy, so you better trade up and take him because I might take this guy. You, you want to fool everybody. So all of this is smoke right now at the end of the day. But could they do it? Could they do it? Let me know. We got more to talk about, too. Uh, more news. Some stuff that I haven't even gotten into in just a little bit. Did I say anything too controversial? Not quite. Yeah, so top 30 visit. Raiders are going to host, host Michael Penix Jr. soon. We'll see what's happening. And... Um, we got more coming up right here, though, to talk about, dude. We do. And I'm getting some acid reflex, but I am fighting through it, baby. Yes. So here's another reason why I do believe the Jaden Daniels thing is a foregone conclusion. Why it's, you know, I, I, I think he's going to the commanders at pick two. I don't think they're going to let him fall. He had Brian Kelly, the head coach of the you know, of LSU saying he's going to get the ball out to his playmakers and make plays for Washington is what he said. He let it slip that he's going to Washington. Uh, Lamar's done a pretty good job with his size. I think uh, Mahomes, I wouldn't consider him a giant because he's going to get the ball out to the playmakers and, and make plays uh, for Washington. If you're, um, he, he make plays for Washington? Uh, for Washington. If you're, make plays uh, for Washington. And, and make plays uh, for Washington. And see, so like, not only did it seem obvious to me that Cliff Kingsbury and the commanders would like a mobile QB like Jaden Daniels. He's pretty much, I, I think, going to be the next Lamar Jackson. Yes, Cliff Kingsbury could work with that, definitely. But now you got the freaking head coach of LSU, the college that Jaden Daniels plays for, saying he's going to make plays for Washington. So that's why... Like I said at the top of the show, I, the Antonio Pierce connection to Jaden Daniels reuniting in Vegas, that would be freaking amazing. I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do that if that happens on draft night, but it, it it's just starting to feel like he's going to the commanders. And then did he screw up? Does the guy know something we don't know? This, this, this freaking dude who has been in the sun a little too much, he looks a little bit like a lobster right here. He's pink as hell. Um... No, he, he kind of let it slip. Place uh, for Washington. If you're, um, he, he is. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Does is, is that mean it's a foregone conclusion? I want to know in the comments in the chat. Is this guy going to Washington now? I want to know. I mean, I, I'm. I'm taking a pie to the face. Look. So here's the thing, and and and, and I'm going to do this because whenever I do this shit, and I've only done this one other time. Whenever I do this shit. It works. It works. It works whenever I do this. So if the Raiders 
grab Devonte Adams. <laughs> or no, that's what I did before. I did not believe the Raiders were going to grab Devonte Adams. I thought well, it was way too good to be true. And you know, I basically said, I, you know, I I so don't think it's going to happen that I'm down to take a pie to the face. It, it was a really big on the Raiders. If Devonte Adams walked in to the Green somebody in the same conference who's going to compete against you it would happen but i just personally think and even if we did get Devonte adams which i do not think is happening and what was the bet i made uh audrey what was the bet i made if we get Devonte adams if we get Devonte adams willie is taking one pie to the face that is how confident i am in the fact that we are not going to get Devonte adams if we end up getting him i will take a pie Maybe just a slice to the because I want to eat some of the pie. Maybe just a slice <laughs> to the face on it's, the show. It's going. So I like I just thought it was too good to be true. I thought Devonte wanted to stay with the Packers and play one last year with Green Bay. And then sure enough, man, uh, I was completely wrong. Obviously, a lot of you on this show know I'm a big time Derek Carr fan. So I was just absolutely stoked when they got Devonte Adams. And I was so confident it wasn't going to happen. And then I even bet that I'd take a pie. So same shit with Jaden Daniels. And then that's what ended up happening here. One. <laughs> Eggplant emojis everywhere. <laughs> we got Devontae Adams! Let's go, Fresno State! Let's go, Raiders! <laughs> you got to take over. I got to clean this up. <laughs> I was, oh yeah. Wait, wait, get up there again. <laughs> yeah, she freaking got, got me pies. twice. <laughs> go Raiders! Yeah, <laughs> go Dave Ziegler! Let's go Ziegler! I was secretly super pissed that she got me twice. <laughs> that was absolutely hilarious back then. So, same shit. Because, you know what? It's too good to be true. But every time I say it's too good to be true, since I've been a freaking YouTuber, the shit ends up happening, the shit works out, and we all celebrate. So I'm confident that they are not going to... I would fucking love for them to grab Jane Daniels, but i just not confident it's going to happen. But if it does happen, I will go live and take those pies again. We're going to need a lot more towels because we're in a carpeted room now, but I'm going to take some pies to the face for sure if we grab Jane Daniels. Because I don't think it's going to happen. I wish it was going to happen. I hope it happens. I think he's going to the commanders. The, the Brian Kelly already let it slip. But if it does happen, let's have some let's have some fun, dude, and, and, and we'll take some freaking pies to the face again. So hopefully, because I tend to be wrong with, with that kind of stuff. But with the too good to be true shit, I've been wrong lately. I am totally down for that to happen. And that was a very classic moment two years ago uh when this happened and and we we had a lot of fun back then doing it so why not why not get crazy again let's get crazy again <laughs> god so pissed off right here you know what not as bad of a bald spot though did i lose hair <laughs> oh we here we go over a thousand people get these likes okay we'll see we'll see, we'll see what's going on all right so one more stuff. I mean, I think it was a pie. It was a pie with whipped cream. I didn't get like bread crumbs in my face. I wasn't going to go that far. So Brian Kelly making this comment. And then, he, so here's another thing. That's the reason why I wanted to bring up Devontae Adams. So I brought up, not the Pierce singing at the gala. I brought up the Jets wanting to trade. And then I also saw this. And I didn't think anything of it because I'm so sick of us making a big deal about every Instagram post that any player ever makes. Um, and Devontae on Instagram reposted Jaden Daniels in an interview. I think it was an interview at his pro day saying my resume speaks for itself. No, look, look I mean, look, he, maybe he's a good friend of the guy. He has said previously that he likes the guy. He That's one guy he'd like to play with. He did say that on uh, Amber Theo Harris's show. And Devontae tends to do this, though. He tends to just support other players, other young QBs. Think about it, man. He's like one of the biggest celebrities in the NFL. So 
You know, a lot of these people talk. A lot of these people are friends. So I didn't want to make too big of a stink about this. Some people did, but hey, maybe there's a message. I saw Shannon Sharp talking about this saying, hey, is Devontae trying to send a message saying, hey, Raiders, please send all the ammo to grab the next future franchise QB. My clock is ticking at 31 years old. I need to win a Super Bowl now. Please grab an elite QB. Maybe Devontae is sending a message that way. But this is the post he made talking about Jaden Daniels just reposting him. But that was enough to set some alarms where people are thinking, hey, what's going on? Is the dude uh, trying to send a message? Is he saying, hey, Raiders, get your freaking dude. We need a QB. Let's do it. But oddly enough, just like I mentioned earlier, the only way the Raiders can grab this guy, in my opinion, is if they trade away Devontae Adams. So it's kind of a catch-22 in that same way. What are you guys saying? Yeah, supportive of Shroud last year. Yeah, I look so young two years ago with the pie thing, yeah. Devontae Adams also recently asked about uh, the hiring of black head coaches like Antonio Pierce, and he had an interesting and comment we, saying we, it's we not made, a big deal when it comes to the Raiders in Oakland. And we made honest. I think that depending on the location of the team makes that a bigger deal. What do you mean? Like a black head coach on the Patriots is going to be much bigger, in my mind at least, than uh, putting a black head coach on the Raiders as huh. far as the way it's perceived. No, I don't think he's saying anything negative here. I mean, this this got tons of views. I mean, th this went a little viral here. But, I mean, the, the Raiders, you know, had Art Shell. They, they've had Hugh Jackson more recently. They've had black head coaches before. So it is not as big of a deal as compared to New England and the Patriots. So I think that's just Devontae Adams' point there. But I was surprised this went super viral. Maybe people are trying to imply that he's not hyping up Pierce enough. Who knows? You know, people are always nitpicking. And look, I, and I'm a nitpicker too with these types of things. But uh, that's a comment he made. Who knows if he could be shipped? Who knows if the Raiders will fulfill his wishes and grab the next franchise QB? One of my wishes is that the Chiefs, that their organization gets disciplined and gets the same amount of criticism that the Raiders do and the Raiders players, Rasheed Rice, this has been the news lately. Wide receiver, second round pick of the Chiefs, got involved in an accident, a hit and run, fled the freaking scene, uh, trying to apologize for it somehow in a re really weird, cryptic way. But this was some rough stuff. So, this is a Chiefs wide receiver. And, and, and I hope we're going to hear about this as much as we've heard about all the Raiders drama, you know, from Damon Arnett to Henry Ruggs. Now I will say this is not as bad as Henry Ruggs because no one lost their life and rest in peace to Tina, uh, Tina and all that stuff that happened back then in 2021. But you know, the chiefs have had some problems from Jackson Mahomes with his uh, SA allegations. I, I can't say it specifically to Britt Reed, Britt Reed. A lot of us forget about Britt Reed. The son of Andy Reid. Now, he was in a car accident that, if I'm not mistaken, and look, I can't even pull it off the top of my head because it's so repressed compared to negative Raiders news, right? Like, usually I could pull it off the top of my head, but you got to dig for, for this stuff. Really, you do. And, and call me conspiracy theorist. I, I don't give a shit. They, they treat the Chiefs differently than, than other teams in the NFL. I mean... I, I I I don't care at this point. You, you can call me whatever you want. But uh, mother of the girl, uh, she was who was injured in the Britt Reed car crash. Now, Andy Reed's son. And this was back in, uh, I believe the wreck was in 2021. Wow, the wreck was in 2021, the same year as Henry Ruggs. Did you hear about it as much as Henry Ruggs? Fuck no, you didn't hear about it, right? Because it's, you know, it's the, it's the Chiefs. They're just so great. They're so amazing, right? Like, they could do no wrong. Well, the son of Andy Reid got in a car wreck, injured a young girl, and it's not like, oh, she's, like, kind of injured. She, if I'm not mistaken, let me just make sure I get my facts straight before I say this. Uh, he was only put away for a year? 
And the condition of the girl is quite intense. From what I remember, she, I, I don't want to say it until I figure it out right now. She's now in special education classes, has balance issues, and uh, she, if I'm not mistaken, is slightly paralyzed or something like this. Like her life is significantly different. She might not be paralyzed, but but there, there, she had an insane reaction to this wreck in, in which she's in a totally different condition than, than prior to that wreck. So Britt Reed, who, who, by the way, was working. It's not like this is just Andy Reed's son. This guy was working on the Chiefs coaching staff. He was a part of the Chiefs coaching staff. Why don't we hear about it every day like we hear about you know, all the Raiders people who, who get into trouble? We just don't for some reason. He gets a little slap on the wrist because of it. Um, trying to find out exactly the, and, and shout out to Tedford Von Patriot gifting a ton of memberships here. My guy had not seen him in a while. Shout out to the man Tedford getting all these people to become members. Yes. Yes. And in the meantime, I will figure out Ariel Young. What happened to Ariel Young? She sustained a traumatic brain injury. And was in a coma for 11 days. So some messed up stuff. We never hear about that. I love how we're celebrating, but we're hearing about all this dark stuff going on. You know, it's a little awkward, but hey, the world's an awkward place. Appreciate you, Tedford, though, man, being the man to help support the stream and get so many more members here. And it's funny, we were watching an old video and, and Tedford was inside of it. In the chat, too. So the dude was drunk when he got in this car wreck, too, and critically injured this five-year-old girl who now, you know, has, has, has had injuries, never the same, never going to be the same, now in special ed classes. And then he gets, he has a sentence commuted, and he'll just be under house arrest. Only served a year. Only served a year. That's it. So... I'm sorry. I just know the Chiefs get a little special treatment. That kind of stuff really does piss me off. And now we have the Rasheed Rice. Multiple men fleeing the scene after a car crash. Car crash. Vehicle allegedly owned by Chiefs receiver Rasheed Rice. We, we all know it's, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, to figure out what happened. I mean, that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say since I don't, I can't get into too much trouble. Doesn't take a genius, and we have new information that the men fled the scene. And there's there's more stuff coming out all the time about this. And I, and I wonder how much I wonder how much this is going to be talked about in the future. This was a, a incident where two people went to the hospital. Rishi Rice fleeing the scene. You guys just gonna leave it. They just left the, they left the fucking Lamborghini and a Corvette and they stole them, I bet. They're, they were putting firearms in. So, wrecking, they were racing, they were racing each other, wrecked, and then freaking fled the scene. And six cars were, six cars were hit in this race, two people in the freaking hospital. This was in Dallas. To all the new members in the chat, though, give a shout out to Tedford Bomb Patriot in the chat below. Give this man a salute. Let him know you appreciate the guy. Appreciate Tedford Bomb Patriot here while I sip some water. Shout out to the guy spamming Chandler Jones emojis. Shout out to you. Don't really know what's going on here. <laughs> but, uh, hey. Boost the, boosting the engagement. Why not? Why not? And Tedford's sitting more... Well, more members are rolling in here. More of them. So, just to recap the Rasheed Rice, then we're going to do a mock draft after we recap, re, re, re -crap, recap the Rasheed Rice a little bit more. So, running away from the incident, he had dash cam footage 
of the car crash surface. Causing some big problems there in Dallas, Texas. Not not okay, to say the least, right? Um, and they got plenty of evidence. Plenty of evidence to see the, the men get out of the vehicle here. They got some stuff. They're holding on to some stuff right here. And looks like they're taking off. So they get out of the vehicle. You can see them holding some objects here. I mean, it looks like a bag, a couple of objects taken off, instantly dipping out, instantly dipping out. Tedford, F.A.B., F. Chandler Jones, F. Josh McDaniels, F. The Chiefs, Bolts, and Don Coles, Raiders rules. Shout out to Tedford Von Patriot in the chat below. But... There you have it there, Rasheed Rice. More information is coming out about that guy constantly. Will he be suspended? Will he be disciplined by the league? Statement from his attorney has emerged in which we hear. Oh, on behalf of Rasheed Rice, his thoughts are with everyone impacted by the automobile accident. Rasheed is cooperating with local authorities and will take all necessary steps to address the situation. Any and all requests will go to the lawyers, blah, 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 blah. Legalese, legalese, legalese. Hiding, hiding, hiding. Not taking responsibility and trying to make sure you have the lowest penalty. I understand. I understand. Um, And they're kind of trying to deny that he was one of the guys fleeing this scene, which I think is quite bizarre. I mean, if that's the defense the, the lawyer wants to go to, that's that's pretty weird. Oh, turn there. Okay, my bad. Um, I mean, but it's clearly him. He, he was hanging out at this like maybe a family go gathering beforehand, has the same bracelet on. Looks like it's uh, definitely him. You know what I mean? You got, you got more pictures emerging. The guy is there with this bracelet somewhat. Also has the same bracelet here as he's fleeing the scene and l let's see will they uh will, will they give some fair punishment i, I don't know i don't know because because he, he only allegedly had the wreck we we still don't know if he, he's officially had the wreck we, we don't know yet right yeah i mean bs what's crazy is the guy was on the run i mean they were looking for this guy for a while he eventually came forward with his lawyers but he was on the run and the police were looking for him and, and it Took quite a while for them to finally hear back from Rasheed Rice. So big concern to me. And I just think, hey, I, I just hope the league, when it comes to the tampering with McCole Hardman, which we talked about in our recent Jets video, we talked about the fact that Jets have a case to pop the Chiefs with tampering since they literally, according to McCole Hardman, while he was on the Jets, the Chiefs were talking to him. The GM of the Chiefs, was texting with a wide receiver who was a member of another NFL team. That's against the rules. That's tampering. And that's what was going down, straight up. So hopefully they get punished. I mean, I, I would like to think the NFL is just a fair place, right? It, it, it's a fair place. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. So before we get into this mock draft, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Don't fall for April Fool's stuff. Don't do that. No. Uh, we talked about some of the weaknesses on the Raiders. We talked about the Jaden Daniels elbow. Uh, talked more about the draft order. Reports by ESPN that the Raiders are desperate to trade up. Uh, Raiders meeting with Jaden Daniels. Also talked about Pierce doing a little bit of singing. At the Silver and Black Gala, we talked about Brian Kelly saying that Jaden Daniels is going to Washington, letting it Playing slip. Playmakers and, and make plays uh, for Washington. Make plays for Washington. Also talked about the Jets trying to trade away their number 10 overall pick. And Jaden Daniels getting a little retweet by Devontae Adams on Instagram. We talked about that as well. <clears throat> Devontae also talking, making a provocative statement about uh, you know, first black head coaches in the NFL in terms of region matter mattering more. Michael Penix Jr., pocket passer from the Washington Huskies, meeting with the Raiders and the Broncos as well. Pretty significant. Anthony Brown. I think the Raiders are looking for somebody like Anthony Brown, a mobile guy, somebody more mobile than Michael Penix Jr. Raiders also re-sign a guard, Jordan Meredith. They need help on the right side of the offensive line. 
and the Rasheed Rice disaster continues for the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's do a mock draft, and then we will end on a mock draft. I have not done a mock draft probably in two years live. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And sh like, okay, let me know in the chat. Te and, and Tedford, is Tedford really gifting more memberships here? Are you freaking kidding me right now? Are we going off this crazy right now? This early? Tedford Vaughn Patriots supporting this live stream. Guys, the more support we get, the more we make this happen. We are going to try to make these live streams happen as much as possible. But by the way, just, just in case you want to know, I am going to do these live streams more often at night. I think I'm gonna be the night guy because because I tend to make videos. So, I'm, I, I'm a, so if, if you're if there's a big event happening and you're like, damn, I really want Willie to go live, just know that I'm probably gonna go live at night. Like 99% sure gonna go live at night and do more things like these, man. Ted for Von Patriot getting us so many memberships. So Weddy, Cameron, David Cameron, Captain Bucks. Guys, give a salute to Ted for Von Patriot, especially if you got a free membership. Give him a thank you, man. Give him a thank you. And you got and you got some of it coming in right now. Hell freaking yeah. Hell freaking yeah. All right, so getting into the mock draft right now. Let me know in the chat though. Should I do all teams the first round or just Raiders full drafts? That uh what mock draft are we doing? Raiders, Raiders seven rounds or all teams first round. And we have a little bit of time to decide. I, I, I think it's going to be pretty lopsided. <laughs> lopsided. Uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll see how, how quickly people make this happen. Are we doing all teams? And the poll is in the chat below. You can vote in the chat. Are we doing all teams? Or just Raiders seven rounds? When you're getting into Raiders seven rounds, it's sort of like the reason why I want to do all teams in the first round. That's why I was leaning toward, towards this. Hey, Ted, Tedford's going to real northbound bam. Tedford has to be the plug because how the hell does he keep doing this? Is he the plug? Is he the one who slipped a little bit of extra into Jimmy Garoppolo's uh, prescription? You know, his, his PED prescription. <laughs> so we'll find out. And we're finding out soon. It's only 56% for Raiders seven rounds. Because uh, look, I don't want the AI to choose something stupid for the, the mock draft in the first round. So that's why I am leaning more towards this, really. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be fun regardless. Tons of more members hanging out. Oh, and Tedford Von Patriot's comment here. Didn't get to see it right now because lately we've just been doing this box thing. Go Raiders. It's going to be a... This is from Ted for Von Patriot, the one who gifted so many memberships. It's going to be a great year. I can feel it. The stench of Josh McDouchebag is gone. Thank God. Yes, thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is finally gone. <laughs> I mean, I hope that's enough. I hope that's enough. It might be enough. The guy might have been that bad that it might be enough to race and start new. So we're doing a 57%. Uh, we're doing a seven round Raiders mock draft. That is what we're doing. Let's freaking pull it up. Let's pull this shit up. And, I, and, and I'm going to do realistic, dude. Like, I, I'm not going to just choose somebody who I think is dope. I'm going to choose what I actually think is going to happen, what I actually think the Raiders are going to do. We're going to only do the Raiders. Hopefully I got this figured out right. Draft order is locked. I'm the Raiders. Public versus PFF board. We'll go a little bit towards PFF. Care for, for positional value. I'm going to go a little higher there. I think people do that. Oh, well, no. You know, we're, we're going to go more towards needs. We're going to do less randomness. You know, I'm taking out all the randomness. Shit's not usually that random. Sorry. 
It's more about need, in my opinion. So we're going to do that. Seven rounds. Let's go. We're starting the draft. Can we trade up? Okay. Let's first see if we can. Okay, let's start the draft. Okay, we're, we're not going to trade up. We're not going to trade up. We're assuming that we can't trade up. We are on the clock now. Pick 13. Biggest needs a quarterback. And I think a corner. QBs that are available. We got Bo Nix. We got Michael Penix Jr. Could we maybe get a QB a little bit later? Personally, I, I mean, I would take Bo Nix. I think he's much more talented than people are giving him credit for. I would take him. If we have Terry on Arnold at cornerback, I may, oof, I may be inclined to take him. Cooper DeJean, though, nobody drafted Cooper DeJean. DeJean. DeJean, my bad. So it, to me, it's between Terry on Arnold and Bo Nix. That, that's who it's between for me. And with this number 13 overall pick, I think you're giving up. I think you're, you're trading, you're drafting too high. Traditionally, if you're grabbing Bo Nix now, <sighs> Penix Jr. is there. I don't think the Raiders are going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and take, I, I, I'm going to do what I think is realistic. I'm going to do what I think is realistic. All right. We're taking Tyrion Arnold. I think they're going to do it. Pierce met with the guy. We're taking him at pick 13. And Bo Nix is still there in the second round at pick 44. Bo Nix is still there in the second round as we are on the clock at pick 44. That's a freaking miracle. I did not see that happening. Now, is Penix still there? Penix is still there as well, along with Spencer Rattler. I think we need a mobile guy. Luke Getzey's offense originally tried to grab Cliff Kingsbury. Then he pulled out of the job. Raiders and Antonio Pierce, I believe, want a mobile quarterback. That's going to be Bo Nix. We're taking him in the second round. Pick 44. That's a steal, dude. I already love this freaking draft. Now, Blake Corum out of Michigan, one of the highly rated uh, running backs. A lot of people have this guy top three. You can get a great running back right here to compete with Zamir White, compare, compete with Madison. I mean... You already fixed corner. Now, do we have a tackle we can grab? Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame, the best one available. We're in the third round right now. Pick 77. Are we reaching for a running back by drafting one in the third round? I think if you can get the best running back, a lot of people believe the best running back in the draft, Blake Quorum. Uh, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. We have Thayer Mumford at tackle. Maybe we can find a veteran, or, or do we just straight up need a tackle? Is it at the point where we're willing to reach for Blake Fisher? Played a decent amount of games the past two years, healthy. Uh, you know, what are the negatives? Overextended feet might be too slow to protect the outside shoulder. That's fine if you're going to move this guy to right tackle. <sighs> Uh, he needs to be more patient. Six foot six, 312 pounds, 21 years old. I, you know what? I, I, I I'm going to take offensive line later. I'm, I'm going to grab the best running back, Blake Quorum. I, I'm grabbing Blake Quorum third round. In my opinion, best running back in the, in the draft. Uh, so here we go. Pick one twelve, fourth round right now. We got needs. We got needs center. I'm not taking a center. I might take a guard. Definitely need a guard. So we're basically in the territory of saying Thayer Mumford's our starting tackle. I mean, I don't, I don't know about that. But we got Christian Jones, one of the top rated tackles on the board right now. Six foot six, 321 pounds. Don't necessarily have... Uh, you know, the weight here, but he's been moving up in the percentiles. You got Michigan. Michigan had a great O-line, good run blocking O-line. You can get a guard, Trevor Keegan, six foot six, three twenty pounds. We need some offensive line. I'm taking a I'm taking an interior guard for a great run first offense in college football. 
last year. I'm going to go ahead and grab that with the Michigan running back. Sometimes you got to just pick a college that's clicking this past year and roll with it. We got another pick in the fifth round, and then we have four more remaining picks after that. Do we need another running back? I think we need to get younger on the defensive side of the football. We grabbed our quarterback, Tyrion Arnold, already. Maybe need to do something with, with safety, try to get some competition there. You could grab a wide receiver. That's a possibility as well. But when you're late fifth round, you're sort of just seeing what's happening. You also have Theo Johnson, Penn State, tied in the numbers last year. 341 yards. I don't know if that's the guy we need in Vegas right now. Big size, good blocking tight end. I guess if you want somebody to be behind Michael Mayer, he could be the guy. Raiders do have a need at linebacker. I would say linebacker, linebacker and tackle. Are pro if we're drafting for need, are probably the biggest needs right now. Got Michael Barrett, uh, Bert Bertrand, Notre Dame. Could be some interesting stuff there. 12, really, the guy has played a decent amount over the past three years. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Averaging 12 games each year. Uh, seems like, I'm not too familiar with this guy on Notre Dame. He seems like he's more of a pass rushing uh, linebacker. Let me see what they're saying. Six foot one, 235 pounds. Not that tall, but hey, a smart coverage player. Pierce was a six foot one linebacker who ended up being a very smart player. Let's go ahead and take JD uh, Bertrand as a linebacker who they believe can fit in, in a three, four scheme interior linebacker. Let's go ahead and get this guy undersized a little bit in terms of length. But let's see if this could uh, turn into something special. We're going to get him right there. And now we're moving towards the sixth round. And at this point, I think you got to go tackle. I think you got to get some safeties involved. Uh, we could try to go best player available. Julian Pearl out of Illinois. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not too familiar with the guy. But we got Julian Pearl, gave up seven sacks last year, hasn't improved much over the past three years, pretty steady numbers, played left tackle primarily, but did play some right tackle in 2021. Good length, though, six foot six. Caden Wallace, though, all right tackle the past three years, a true right tackle, six foot five, but 340 pounds, has that weight already, been trending downwards. I like the fact that he has some reps at right tackle, though, the past three years. I think he can acclimate rather quickly. TCU, that's interesting there as well. Safety, there's not much going on besides Dominique Hampton here. This is tough. This is tough. Played a lot of slot and deep safety. I think we do need a, a deep safety. May, you know, I think it looks like Merrig is moving into the box. <sighs> Huskies, though, played some big games. I'll, I'll take the safety. I'll take the safety. I'll take the deep safety, compete with Marcus Epps. Then we're here in the seventh round with two more picks remaining. Actually, and this is the second to last pick. We got all positions. I, I'm just taking best player available. Dominic Lovett, Georgia, big college. 53 receptions last year, 614 yards, 800, a little drop off there. Ooh, 5'10", 179 pounds. Do we have a 40 time? No 40 time yet for this guy. I would love to know this dude's 40 time. Is somebody to compete with Trey Tucker, though, a gadget player? I think we need depth as a with a big body wide receiver if I'm going to go wide receiver, honestly. We could get some play at tackle. Brandon Coleman, TCU, good college. Regressed last year, but had a good 2022 season. Didn't seem like he... Gave up a sack, even though they said he regressed. Played some left tackle. I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Brandon Coleman, I'm doing it. We're on the PFF draft website. And now, with the final pick in the draft, I am going to go ahead and make sure we have everything covered at the quarterback position. 
Maybe this guy will be on my practice squad. He had a horrible... No, you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. I was going to grab Tua's brother. Is, is it brother or cousin? Talua, who apparently did really bad at the combine, but he has some NFL homies, right? So could we do that? Or do we want to grab another tight end, Trey Knox? South Carolina playing with Spencer Radler, the, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Doesn't have the weight. It doesn't have the weight. But uh, we can build, put some depth at that position, tight end, or another linebacker, or wide receiver. Franklin out of Mississippi. Injured last year. Doesn't seem like he did much. Going down in stock with the Mississippi Rebels. We took a tackle earlier, right? I'm already blanking on who we already... Uh, who we drafted already. Well, we got to make this last pick special. We really do. So let, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get tra trade Nogs. Let, let, let's get another freaking, let, let's get another tight end. Let, let's get a tight end. Build some depth there. And here we have it. The mock draft. What grade did I get? I should have taken the corner from Arkansas. Oh, man. So I, I might have messed that up. So we got... Terry and Arnold, A minus, considered a slight reach. But then we grabbed Bo Nix in the second round. He was the Will Levis of this past draft. For nobody, nobody picked the guy. Then we grabbed Blake Quorum, high value pick. I liked him as a running back last year. Then we went ahead, got a little knock on the grade, getting freaking Trevor Keegan at guard. But I'm trying, I'm trying to pair up Michigan with Michigan and, and with this run game. Then we got a linebacker of Notre Dame, JD Bertrand. Undersized and height, but still some pretty good numbers last year. Dominique Hampton, the worst pick that we did out of Washington. The Washington Huskies name recognition swayed me and the fact that he could play deep safety instead of box. Brandon Coleman, TCU tackle. That's a quality tackle there, B+. Plus. And then a C with Trey Knox at tight end. We got an A- minus grade. Seventh round pick tackle. A- minus grade. Top of the draft, we went corner quarterback, halfback, guard. I think those are big needs. Maybe I'm higher on Thayer Mumford than other people. But there we have it, the mock draft that we did. What did they say happened for these other teams? They, they said it went Caleb Williams, Drake May, and then Jaden Daniels to the Patriots is what they said happened. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals with Kyler Murray. That'd be a nightmare for the Chargers. And then at the same time, you had... You know, a lot of movement coming to the uh, through the rest of the draft with the Vikings getting J.J. McCarthy and the Broncos getting a cornerback as well. No other QBs falling in the uh, second half of the draft. Nobody selecting them. Cooper DeJean could have grabbed him there. But there you have it. There you have it. There is the mock draft. We freaking did it. Yes, we did. And now I've been live for about an hour and 25 minutes. I probably, probably, probably should wrap it up. How many people do we have here? I think we had like 560. Okay, we lost a lot of people doing the mock drafts. So everybody hates mock drafts. Don't do them. We freaking tanked. Or maybe my internet went out and I didn't even know. But literally, 387 to 269. Lost 100 people. At about 419, I think when this mock draft started. Either way, <laughs> either way, uh, probably should peace out. Probably should peace out. So peace out, you guys. We're going to try to go live more often. At nighttime, in particular. Yeah, people like the idea of a mock draft, but do people really want to sit there? And, you know, it's a little rough. We're going to have more content coming out this week, though. We took a little break. I took a little break. Um... I am going to cover all of the Raiders news that I feel that is important. As you can see on my channel, I'm also covering tons of other stuff, tons, tons of other great stories around the NFL. We cover the Justin Fields trade uh, to the Steelers. We covered Caleb Williams, some of the drama he has with the Bears. We've had a lot of fun doing that. So we're going to try to keep more of that, some of my favorite stories around the NFL. And also... When there is Raiders stories, when there is Raiders news, we're going to be breaking it down, giving our usual high-quality videos that we do. I don't want to do the thing where, like, 
you just make a Raiders video for the sake of a Raiders video, even though there's nothing going on. I'd much rather just hang out with you guys and shoot the shit like we did today. So that's sort of an update that we have on this channel. And that's sort of also why the past week has been a little lighter than usual, in addition to taking a break, a much needed break. But, um, you know, I, yeah, I just, just don't want to do the whole like, hey, this might happen and there's not really any update. So just know. Just know when I do post a Raiders video, I do believe there's something serious. There's something serious to talk about instead of just the same old bullshit, right? <laughs> so peace out, everybody. And I hope you have a great